This is Josh Mandel with a little mobile experiment playing with the latest OpenAI models, the O1 series. And I apologize for any background noise. I'm just enjoying a little time outside uh, while it's still light out in late summer in Madison. Um, but I, I noticed that the OpenAI documentation on the platform website included some use case examples, which were not quite clinical, but they got me thinking about some related clinical medicine applications. Uh, so this was an example that was designed to basically take a customer service public facing document that explained to users how to solve some problem uh, and turn that document into an LLL facing, uh, LLM facing kind of algorithm, something that could be followed um, step by step. So it's basically a task for breaking um, the customer service document down into individual steps and sub steps and describing the kind of if then else logic that could be used to transition from one step to the other. Uh, and then if you need some outside information, you can do some kind of function calling in between. And it occurred to me that we could do something very, very similar to this um, in the clinical domain. So I'm gonna ask Claude to take this prompt. Can you take this prompt and convert it for use in the clinical domain, question mark? Instead of customer service documents, we'll be using clinical guidelines as our inputs, but we wanna structure them in a very similar way, period. The goal will be to have an algorithm that an LLM can run by asking questions to the patient, period. If basic information is needed from the patient as part of a history, or part of the clinical dialogue, comma, the LLM should provide the questions to get that input, period. And if we need to interact with an outside system like an EHR or pharmacy, comma, you can um, have the abstraction use function calls to do that, period. Please output the new prompt in an artifact, period. Um, so the idea here is we're just going to get something that we can then use with GPT-01, with a preview model, to read some clinical guidelines. So I'm gonna take this whole prompt, uh, let's see, review the guidelines thoroughly, break them down into sections, subsections, if then else. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, let's assume that the patient is gonna be the source for most clinical history, period. You can call the EHR or a pharmacy system if you need to interact around some very specific piece of data, period. Um, I just want to basically get to the point where this is going to drive a discussion uh, and I don't want to have necessarily a, a lot of calls out to some backend because I'm going to have to simulate the behavior of that backend myself. Um, let's give this a shot. So I'm going to take this prompt and I'm going to paste it into ChatGPT. Uh, I wanted to make a quick tweak around one of these function calls that I saw scrolling down the screen here. Um, call schedule follow-up function, that's not bad, that's not bad. There's one other that I thought was kind of funny. Prescribe medication, that's fair. Um, let's just say, oh, that's fine. Let's just give that a shot. So we're gonna paste in that whole prompt, and then I'm just gonna copy this whole web page with some acute migraine headache treatment guidelines. Uh, fortunately, I am not myself suffering from acute migraines, but uh, it's you know, one of these areas where there's some good guidelines that have been written up, and I just want to see how well the O1 model will do in structuring these things. And the first thing you'll notice is before I see any actual outputs, the model is doing a whole bunch of chain of thought internally. And I don't get to read the thought tokens that it's outputting here, but I can see a kind of real-time summary that's being created over those chain of thought tokens. And the thought tokens might be very verbose. There could be thousands of tokens being generated under the hood here. And I can see roughly what it's doing. It's converting guidelines, creating some detailed routines, <laughs> establishing rapport. So that's kind of like a maybe meta cognitive error here. Of course, we're not establishing rapport with the patient, but maybe it's writing guidelines about how to establish rapport. It's hard to say because all we're really reading is the, the summary here. Um, but okay, piecing together the steps to do each of these things. Um, so after 35 seconds, now we can see the actual output tokens that we're allowed to read. So you're going to greet yourself, you're going to confirm the patient's identity, ask about headaches. Uh, so that looks pretty plausible. Uh, and then you're gonna conclude the clinical encounter um, with no parameters. Uh, well, we'll see how this goes. Looks like this model is frozen. Uh, I have a stop button instead of a submit button here, uh, but it did seem to get pretty much to the end of the, the protocol. I see the last functions defined here. So I'm just gonna hit stop and I'm gonna take this output and I'm gonna copy it. Uh, and now this sort of encapsulates 
the migraine treatment protocol. And I'm gonna start a new conversation with maybe a less capable model, uh, or at least a, a model that doesn't do all this kind of new uh, reasoning chains. Uh, maybe I'm gonna try this in Claude. So I'm just gonna start a new chat in Claude. Uh, and I'll paste this in and I'll say, please use this protocol to interact with me as a patient period. Let's simulate a dialogue where you can ask me any questions that you want to and I will simulate the patient's responses period. If you need to call any functions, you can just output the function call and I will simulate a response right here in the chat period. Only ask one question at a time so we can maintain a realistic dialogue period. Before each step, comma, output a summary in parens explaining where we are in the decision tree, but make sure that your actual uh, core output would make sense in the context of a patient dialogue period. So we'll see if it's able to take those guidelines, uh, starting with encounter step one, greeting the patient. Hi, I'm Dr. Claude. I'll be assisting you. How are you doing today? Uh, well, I'm here because I've been having uh, headaches for the last couple of months, period. So confirming the patient identity. I understand you're here. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, John Doe, and I was born on October 3rd, 1983. Okay, uh, assessing the current headache. Thank you, Mr. Doe. Uh, let's talk about the headaches you mentioned. Are you currently experiencing a headache right now? Uh, no, I'm not. Not right now, no. Okay, the patient's not currently experiencing a headache, so we step to step 16. Ask the patient if they have any questions or concerns. Even though you're not having a headache at this moment, I'd like to learn more about these headaches that you've been experiencing over the past couple of months. Before we do that, any specific questions or concerns about your headaches? Well, they're kind of scary, comma. They've really put me in a lot of pain and they've prevented me from getting my usual work done. The patient has expressed concerns, so we'll address them and move back to step four to evaluate the characteristics of the headaches. So this is a little bit crazy. This is not exactly passing my uh, sniff test in terms of following a discrete set of step-by-step uh, -step logic, but let's just carry on and see where we get. Let's delve in. There's that word, delve into the details of the headaches to better understand them. Uh, so I've been getting these a couple of times a week, usually in the late morning, and they've been on my left side, and it's kind of a pounding sensation. Uh, certainly happy that I have not actually been having any headaches like that. Uh, thank you for the description, Mr. Doe. Um, when they occur, how long do they typically last? Uh, they've been lasting for a couple of hours. I'd say they're a 7 out of 10. Patients reported moderate severe pain. Continue with step 4 to gather more details. I have a couple more questions. Uh, do you notice any nausea? No nausea or vomiting. Okay, so uh, I don't know why we jumped to step 16 earlier, but step four seems to be the evaluation step, so that's nice. Uh, during these headaches, do you notice if you become sensitive to light or sound? I've definitely been feeling like I want to close my eyes and just curl up. Okay, moving on to step five, applying the pound mnemonic to assess for migraine. Based on what you've told me, it seems like these headaches have several characteristics that might be consistent with migraines. They're occurring on one side, they have a pounding quality, they last for a couple of hours, they're quite severe, and they make you want to retreat from light and sound. Uh, have you noticed any changes in your usual headache pattern recently? Well, these all started a couple months ago, comma, before that I never had any problems. Uh, the patient has reported new onset, which could be a red flag. So we're going to move to step six, screening for red flags. Okay. I do wonder what step five was, but we'll check that out later. Um, it's important to know that these are new development. I want to ask you a few questions. Nothing like that. Uh, they tend to build up. Okay, moving to step seven to determine treatment, but we'll also consider referral. Thank you for the information. It's helpful to know that they build up instead of starting suddenly. Um, I believe it would be beneficial to have a more comprehensive evaluation. Uh, do you have any thoughts or concerns about seeing a neurologist? Well, these symptoms have really been bothering me and uh, it took me a couple months to get this appointment. So I'd really like to figure something out sooner. You're right, that waiting can be frustrating. Let's discuss some treatment options. Triptans, uh, do you have any history of heart disease? No history of anything like that. Uh, 
Simitriptan is designed to be taken at the onset of a migraine. Typical starting dose is 50 milligrams. I'm not taking any other medications and I don't have any allergies. Okay, recommend medication function with medication, Simitriptan 50. So you're gonna take one a day, take it with water, rest, uh, Thanks, it's good to know about this and I'm looking forward to giving it a try. Uh, I'm glad you're open to trying it. One principle is to take it as early as possible. Additionally, people find it's helpful to identify and avoid potential triggers. I really haven't noticed any patterns, although it usually happens late morning while I'm at my desk. possible that it could relate to posture or eye strain. You recommend regular breaks, ergonomics, maybe blue light filters. Um, I can give these a shot, but I'm really hoping the medication will help. The patient seems more focused on medication than lifestyle changes. We'll acknowledge this and move on to step 13. Potential side effects. It's natural. Um, okay. Uh, speaking of sumatriptan, you could feel these different side effects. It's crucial to seek immediate medical attention. Wow, that's interesting, period. Uh, I don't have any more questions. I'm just interested to see how we make it out of this workflow. Uh, I appreciate your attention to that information. Um, I'll schedule a follow-up appointment. That would be nice. Uh, in addition to this follow-up. So you can see it's, it's calling a function here, schedule follow-up. will carry out in the background. I want to get started with this medication and then see if I need to move on to a neurologist later on. Before we conclude, I want to make sure that we feel comfortable. Nope, I think I'm good to go. Okay, get a little summary conclude the clinical encounter. So it called this function, but I don't think it gave really good inputs there. Error, comma, missing clinical encounter note, period. Here we go. Okay, so I would say that was a sort of mixed quality exercise. Uh, we got off the rails a little bit, got back on them, but this idea of structuring clinical guidelines has a lot of appeal to it. Uh, and you can see that you know, with the, the level of detail in a prompt like this and the capabilities in the GPT-01 uh, GPT models, uh, you can get a pretty good one shot, or maybe zero shot you would say, result in terms of structuring something modestly complex. So it'll be really interesting to explore these kinds of uh, approaches further. Um, there's, there's so many possibilities that open up with this level of kind of logic and internal thought. Uh, I'm, I'm super excited to play with this more.